Hey guys, this is Patrick Hall with fstoppers.com. In today's video, I'm gonna look at some video transitions that I've always wanted to include in my own projects. Now, even though this video is all about video transitions, I wanna give a big shout out to Boris FX who sponsored this video. Boris FX recently released their very first video editing suite called Optics, and Optics is completely different from any other video editing software in that it uses a lot of the same digital effects found in their other sister software, Sapphire, which is the video software that I'll be using today. With over a thousand creative presets and photo effects like lens flares, digital gobos, sun rays, lightning, and moon overlays, Optics can not only help you process your raw files, but more importantly, it can help you achieve the final artistic vision all in one piece of software. A few weeks ago, I did an overview of Optics. You can find that video in the link in the description below. But today, Optics was really generous to all of our F-Stoppers readers by offering a discount code. You can use the link and code in the description below. To get this, just simply add the Optics monthly subscription option to your cart, enter the code below. You will have to create a login and enter a credit code in the process, but don't worry, you will not be charged and have 30 days to cancel if you do not want to continue using Optics. And also be sure to sign up to the F-Stoppers community because in the next couple of Critique the Communities, we'll be giving away a free copy of Optics to a random winner. But now let's dive quickly into their other software, Sapphire, and see how you can create these dynamic transitions that you just saw in the opening video. As I mentioned, Sapphire offers a lot of visual effects that have been used in Hollywood movies, television shows, and commercials. But to be honest, I haven't really had the need to dive into some of these more complex effects that the software offers, but I have been really interested in these hyper push and hyper pull effects because I see them all over the place. If you've watched any kind of commercials and really pay attention with a discerning eye, you're gonna see these really cool transitions that I just think make your videos look really polished. And I think this effect really works well when your footage is moving and dynamic, maybe a drone shot or a really quick Quick sweeping video frame. It helps you just get that transition and make it look a little bit more polished. So obviously the promo that I just made for this upcoming F-Stoppers project, I probably use the effect a little too much, but at least it gives us something to work with here in Premiere. So let me show you the Premiere file that I'm working with. Now keep in mind when I usually work in Premiere, I have two monitors so that I can see all of my tools a lot more cleanly, but because I'm in the post-production studio, everything is condensed here on just one monitor. So first, let me just show you how this effect works. Here I have a clip of Eli Licardi walking, and then it goes into that cool hyper-pull effect. Let me just go through this frame by frame so you can really see what it's doing. Because a lot of you were probably like me and thinking, oh, I'll just create this on my own. I don't need software to do this. But when you see what it's actually doing, it's kind of zooming into the frame and it's warping the frame as well. But then when you get to about here, you can see it's doing all these crazy mirroring effects and we have a lot of highlights that are blown out. It's almost giving it kind of a kaleidoscope effect. And here you can see the Really Right Stuff logo is showing up, so we're starting to blend in the second frame. And the particular preset that I used here, I'll have to look at what it is, but it's giving a really rapid spinning effect. So you can see this image is not only fading in, but it's also spinning, it's mirrored, I mean, there's just a lot going on here. And so trying to create that effect on your own would be very, very time consuming. Let me go to the second one because I've done a completely different effect here. I'm just gonna go through this frame by frame. This one is the opposite effect. This is a hyper pull. So the camera's gonna pull away from your footage and reveal the next shot. And as you can see, it's kind of zooming out and it's mirroring a bunch of the footage to help fill in the frame. And then now it's zooming into the next frame and pulling out of that one. So it kind of has this like sucking effect where it's pulling out, but then it's pulling back through the next frame. Really, really cool. This third effect is much more simple. If I go through this, you can see it's kind of just pulling straight. 
and transitioning into the next shot. So that one you probably could design yourself and it wouldn't be too bad. And then I'm just gonna go through one more of these so that you can see what it's doing here. It's also pulling the frame out, but now it's warping it. It's adding some motion blur. It's giving that kaleidoscope effect with some different kind of uh, prism effects here. And then we're into our next shot. So let me show you how this effect works. I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this transition. And you can see now I just have two clips lined up side by side. And if I were just to play them regular, you can see it's not a bad transition, but it's nothing special. If you're like me and you use Premiere, when I installed Sapphire onto my computer, it actually allows it to be used as a plugin. And once it's installed, it's going to show up into my effects. Now I do wish Boris would just put a folder that was just Boris effects. Instead, they're all kind of blended into all of the other effects. So if I go to video transitions, you can see there's nothing in here that just says Boris, but we do have these Sapphire Builder right here, and we have the Sapphire Transitions. Anything in here that has the S underscore is going to be the Sapphire effects. Or if you know what you're looking for, you can just come up here to the top and type in Hyper. And the two effects I'm gonna be looking at today are Hyper Pull and Hyper Push. Now, again, let me try to explain this. Hyper Pull is when the camera is pulling out of your footage and then revealing the next shot. Hyper Push is gonna be when it's actually zooming into the footage and then revealing the next shot. So they're they're kind of the same idea, but they're slightly different. So for this particular transition, you can see the next camera angle, this was shot with a drone really low to the boardwalk. It's pulling further away from Alaya. So I wanna use the hyper pull effect, and that's going to match up with the two frames that I have. And then once this is between the two frames, I can then select this and make the transition shorter if I want it to happen really quickly, or if I want it to be a little bit longer, I can zoom that out. A lot of times I will base this on the complexity of the frame or based on the music and kind of the transition of the music. I don't want it to be a longer transition than the vibe of the music, so I want to kind of match that up there. And then there's basically a default transition that Sapphire will do, but if I click on this and come over here to my effects controls, I can go to load preset. And what this is going to do is it's going to bring up the Sapphire preset browser now this computer is not as beefy as I would like, so it's having a really hard time rendering the actual files that I'm using on. So if you're on a slower computer like I am or you're working on the road, you can change this to preview on sample. And that's going to use some clips that are built into Boris so that you can see what the effect is gonna be doing a little bit better. I can hit play here, and it's gonna just show you what that effect is. So this is the default effect. I've created this Elias spin, which is going to kind of twist the camera in a bunch of different ways. I really like this hey ya effect. It almost zooms out and then gives it just a little wiggle there at the end. You could do it kind of a horizontal swipe. Nice and clean is the effect I think I used where it's just going to zoom out really, really simply. You can go crazy with a, a spin. This is kind of like, you know, the old Batman series. If you don't like all the highlights, you could do touch of darks, which is going to introduce kind of a dark frame in between the two transitions. There's a lot of different effects that you can use here. And it's probably wise not to use the same effect over and over again, so that you have a little bit of difference between your transitions. I'm gonna go back with the, let's do the hey ya effect. And now I can hit load. And this is a pretty heavy effect, so you can see my timeline is red there. I'm gonna go ahead and render in and out of my effects so that you can see this in real time. That's just going to take a few seconds. And now if I hit play, you can see it's really swiped out and it's a lot more engaging than the original effect where it just zooms right out. Now let's look at the hyper push because this effect works really well when you're shooting with a drone shot like this. So here the camera is in Beverly Hills, I believe. And it zooms into a property where Mike Kelly is photographing something outside. And so it makes the most sense if you want to transition from an aerial shot to something on the ground to do kind of a hyper push. So I'm going to delete that effect. I'm going to come down here to hyper push, drag that onto my two clips, click the effect, hit load preset. And you can see some of the presets have changed. Not all of the effects are the same with the hyper pull and the hyper push. So you definitely want to go through and preview all of these. This one's pretty cool. I think it's a little too straightforward. Touch of Dark's really cool. I've used this one in some other projects recently. Distorted Blip's really interesting. It's almost using like a magnifying effect where it pulls the middle and makes it warped and then it zooms in. So maybe something like that would be kind of cool. Let's see if we like that. I don't know that that transition's the best transition. I think what I had before, if I go back, I think I like this one better. 
But you can see, really, really cool technique. I've seen this so many times used in commercials, and I've always wondered how they did that, especially when they become really dynamic. It was always something that I wanted to put in my own work, but I never wanted to try to build this out. And then by the time that I add all the effects and layers to do it, it would just make my project really complex. It is so nice to finally have this in a plugin. Now, before I wrap this video up, I do just wanna show you some of the sound effects that I've used to try to pull this effect in a little bit better. You don't have to use this, and these sound effects don't come with Boris. Maybe they should try to tie those into their software. That'd be kind of cool. But I've used one of our music licensing sites to get these swoosh sounds. Let me just solo this so that you can hear what it sounds like. This one's kind of subtle. And at times I've even doubled them up. Let me show you these down here. Here's a Google Earth uh, screen capture where I just zoom into LA. And so I use two different sound effects. One of them, I believe it's like a torch, something on fire going right past the microphone. And then the other one is another swoosh sound. And together it just kind of gives you the sound that you would imagine if the camera was flying really quickly. And I've just used that throughout this. And I make sure to always use different swishing sounds so that every time the effect happens, it doesn't sound exactly like the previous one that you just heard. And then on this last one, I kind of used a jet sound just to make that sound a little different from all the previous ones. So I'll let you guys watch this one more time. I've also added some, you know, babies crying in the airplane scene and also some uh, lake sounds and frogs and stuff at the beginning, some seagulls, but here we go. Oh, and I'll show you that one last effect here because this kind of has a crazy pull out. What I did here was I set the drone to 100%, but then as it backs up, I zoomed in. You can see I've gone from 100%. If I zoom this out, you can see I've moved the frame around. I'm gonna undo that. So while the drone, it's kind of that dolly effect, while the drone is pulling out, digitally I'm pushing in to keep the building kind of the same size and you get that weird modeling effect. So there you go, that's two little effects out of thousands that you can do with Boris FX Sapphire software. If you wanna get a copy of this, it's definitely a little bit more expensive than Optics. Head to the link in the description below, you can download that, and hopefully this was a helpful video for all of you video editors who enjoy doing something new and saving a lot of time. If you want more videos like this, Make sure you subscribe to our channel below. Also head over to fstoppers.com for a free daily photo. Ooh, that's a lot to say, free daily photo content. And if you wanna learn from some of the best photographers, head over to fstoppers.com store where you can check out our full length tutorials. Let's zoom on out of here.